and then you see what's going to happen, right? And you pray for grace. Exactly. Call them back. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> so the slides are up and the BOs are up there on the module thing, so feel free. So we're going to cover components, what's inside it, non-volatile versus volatile, which is a very important concept to have under your belt. It, it'll matter. All this stuff about RAM, ROM, PROM, and EPROMs. And then keyboard shortcuts. Um, Section 508, I don't know what I'd tell you about that. Um, Section 508, just so, so I'll tell you now, then we'll talk about it more, is a part of the Americans with Disabilities Act, which says that if you get federal funds to do your business of any kind, really, um, you have to make sure that people with whatever sensory deficits they have and whatever degree of sensory deficits are able to use your systems and your software. And so actually one of my roles that I, in fact, it's something I enjoyed the most was working. I was the ADA guy for a large team of people in health informatics at the Seattle VA actually. And so I spent a lot of time um, doing that and they flew me off to Salt Lake City where we were developing new software and doing all kinds of stuff. So I had a great and then the Windows keys, and I'll show you that in a moment. And then here's a number of links, Windows Explorer, how to do all that stuff. And I think, yeah, some more. So the desktop, what that means, what focus means, how to create shortcuts, which I'm sure you probably know, the task manager, which has become much easier, USB devices, network basics, um, the whole idea about packets. Um, let's see what else. Oh, okay, so here's the Windows, Windows, so we're going to move on. Some of you may know this, and if you do, I don't want to bore you, but I just want to make you aware of the components of a computer so you understand that. And so when people talk to you, you'll, you'll understand what in the heck is all there. So, for instance, and Aaron's only one you can see it, is that this big guy right here is the, um, the CPU, the central processing unit. But here's the thing I want to get across to you. This little guy right there, that's the CPU. And by the way, normally, I, I pulled this off. Normally, there's a heat sink that sits on top, which is, this is the one I pulled it off. And so that heat sink is important because here's the deal. Um, when you're passing electrons down a wire, um, the wire will tend to get hot depending on how, what the amperage is and the voltage and all those kinds of things. Um, so in computers, heat is their, really their number one enemy, even before dust now, because we don't have, we don't use drives like before. And these hard drives that you have in any computer are sealed oh. very purposely. They're, they're vacuum sealed so um, that no dust can get in there. So you really don't have any moving parts that will touch a, a disk or anything, because dust is a, uh, is a public enemy number one to hard drives. But you don't worry, because it's all sealed. But of course now we have the, the uh, memory sticks, and I have a couple slides of that. So anyway, that's, uh, and you know, it's, it's changed. So here is a, um, a floppy, maybe you guys have seen oh! this. That's a real floppy, that was actually, that was actually the original uh, text editor that we had. Wow. And that was 64K, would you believe. This little device holds a thousand times more information than that does. It's pretty amazing. More than a thousand, actually. Yeah. So just be aware of that. And so, like, what has happened? The miniaturization has changed everything. But here's the thing: on any drive, like you see there, like you have in your hand, uh, information is stored strictly as zeros and ones. It's bits and bytes. And so, what happens if you think about it? The reason that is so big is because the, the actual information is stored in, while, while it's contiguous, it's not stored in, in tight. So what they've done is they've created new devices which actually store the information incredibly close to one another, and so they can make it much smaller. That's one of the reasons they can make it much smaller. It's also due to the medium. Um, my kids get Popular Science Magazine, mm -hmm. and in this um, month's issue, I forget the man's first name, but his last name is Church, mm -hmm. and he works a lot with um, health informatics, and he recently coded his new book. Um, he coded it as 
human DNA and recreated it in a lab. So it's all nucleotide bases mm. and pairs is what he did it as. And he has 70,000 copies of his book can fit in a drop of fluid coded as human DNA. I'll bring you the article. It's fascinating. Uh, actually, you know what? I got. I just got it the other day. Open it up. It's amazing. I yeah, I, I, I didn't see that article, but I will. What's the article I'll it's sitting on my desk What is it called? Ch the Church of Church, maybe? I don't remember. It's something. His name is in the title, but it's really cool. Which so, article? What's, what's the? Popular, popular science. It's in popular science. Pop popular this popular month's popular science. science. Yeah. And he coded I his book. Yeah, he coded his book as DNA, and he can fit even more amazing. Mm -hmm. Seven, but I don't remember how many millions of copies in a drop of fluid. So this is actually an old big, that's four gigabytes. That's quite a bit of space. And I'll have a slide for you in a few seconds and I'll show you. Um, our cell phones actually have uh, little drives like this that are quite a bit smaller. And I have a slide of that so you can see what they look like because I, I don't want to pull it out of here and take a chance on screwing it up. So, um, but look how much things have changed. I mean, yeah, these yeah. big old honking computers are just, you know, history. And and now with our tablets. Did I bring my? Oh, I brought my tablet. It looks like it's between those two books right there. Oh yeah, there it is. Thank you. <laughs> I got a new case for it. So our tablets. I mean, you think about. There's more power in this tablet than in that great big old box. Wow. It'll, it'll do more things. Um, the fact that the uh, wireless and all is built into it. And the time frame that it's, you know, um, yeah. the time frame on those changes is, I think, the most incredible. So let's talk about commands. One of the things I just want to make you aware of is that a lot of people don't take advantage of, and of course the Mac users you've got a little bit different, is this little guy, the Windows com key. Okay, the window key. Uh, so just be aware of that. That is an enormously useful key to, 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 to know about, is the window key. Um, so one of the things uh, to make you aware of is when you use it, is in some cases you hit keys simultaneously, and some keys you hit them sequentially. Mm -hmm. Control. And a lot of people don't realize that. If you do that, you'll begin to find that, yes, you can mouse, but you know, if you get old like me and your shoulder starts to get sore, that, that can become a real problem. But begin to, so if you can't get something to work as you might think, it's try then sequential versus simultaneously or try simultaneous versus sequential and you might find that that works. So just be aware of that, yeah. I have to say that I don't, I don't know very much about any of this. And one of my fears about trying things out, like, oh, if it doesn't work, um, at the same time, try it sequentially. I'm really afraid that I'm going to end up doing something really bad, like erasing a whole, I don't even know. Is that, can you provide me with some sort of reassurance that I'm, I mean, like, is, it, is am I being, am I a little undo, alarmist? Use or the undo key. <laughs> am I going to erase an entire, I, so I'm very timid because I'm afraid I'm going to break something. Well, let me show you a little trick. I'm glad you raised that question, Aaron, because actually that's... Uh, I just won't do it. I'll mouse even though my shoulder's sore. Yeah. But I'm scared. So to get to the desktop, by the way, so I want to get to the desktop. The shortcut for that is Window D. Watch what happens. It takes me to the desktop. Are you aware of that little key? No. Yeah, see? And I mean, that's... Now, you guys have the option oh, key, I think. The oh, option. Yeah, so okay. try Window D and see card. what... Well, so I is this Windows? Right there. Yeah. yeah. Which window? Yeah. Yeah. So the same as Windows, Windows command. command. Well, they're here. Try command, yeah, command, 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 command D. Command D. Yeah, see that's, that. Okay. Try, try option. Uh, play around. Yeah. Okay. And ask somebody because I, I have a feeling that it's it's there somewhere. But are, so to, to get back to home. Oh, to come back and just I do Alt Tab by the way to alt go tab. right back where you were. You just do Alt Tab. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Alt Tab oh. is a wonderful set of keystrokes, and that's frankly part of the reason I like Windows machines because they've got so many wonderful little keystrokes. All right, but let me show you that. Um, so I was going to answer Aaron's question because it's a very valid question. What about keystrokes with Macs? How are they? Do they have a list? Okay, so I'm ready here to edit, right? Yeah. Both the enable editing. I'm going to say enable editing. And I'm afraid I'm going to lose everything. Yes. Because look what happens if I do accidentally Control A for select all. See what I just control A for select all yeah. and then do spacebar, look what happens, it's all gone. All right. 
And the thing is, if you're in a large document, suppose you're working on your scholarly project, and you do control A, you don't realize it, but it's highlighted that whole document. Right. And, you, and then accidentally you hit the space bar, and oh my gosh, it's all gone. I, you know, I'm screwed it. I mean, this is really horrible. It's all gone. No, it's not. It's still in a buffer in memory. Mm -hmm. Now, what in the heck is a buffer? When the computer does things where it's working on stuff, it allocates certain bits of RAM. This is RAM. That's RAM. It, it allocates certain pieces of RAM for you, and different things will go into there, and it's called a buffer. Now, the buffers can vary in size and all that, but basically, unless it's a, you know, a 10 gigabyte document, it's going to fit in there, no problem. But the point is it goes into RAM, so it isn't lost, because watch, I'll show you. What you do then, what do you do to save yourself? Save your bacon, right? What you simply do is Alt, um, alt sorry, Control F4, and what you're trying to do is close the document. Try to. Or you can go up to the... Yeah, but I'm trying not to do that for some reason. Okay, now, so, do you want to save the changes? Well, of course you don't. <laughs> so, whenever you see a dialogue, this is called a dialogue. Whenever you see a dialogue and you see characters that have an underline, I don't want to save it. So all I have to do is touch in and look what happened. It's gone and my, chain, my, my stuff is all still there. So even if I accidentally sort of erase everything, if I just save it without... Uh, I'm sorry, if I exit it without saving, You'll be okay. you're good to go. You're okay. Because now, let's just go back. I'm going to go back to the desktop again. So window D, I'm going to fire up that again and see it's all there. Okay? Now, on a long paper, though, in Word, I mean, that's scary and that's the same problem. Here's the other wrinkle, though, because I've done this, believe me. I mean, all these mistakes I've made, so <laughs> I know about... <laughs> um, is if you've been working away and you've made lots of changes to your paper and then you accidentally control A and then you accidentally hit the space bar and then you go back and, and exit it without saving, you've, lost, you've gotten back your paper but you've also lost then the changes you just made. So, you know, so, um, I mean, I used, I, I had used it with very common, I, I'd come up on the floor to, to help the nurses and they say, oh, baby's here to save us. And I always say to them, you know, Jesus is the only one that saves. <laughs> but if you want to, uh, if you want to remember and be a good user, you have to save your work often, and that's just something I would do. But the, the quick and dirty is Control S is a way to save your paper. Control S, and look how long that. I mean, it, it did it like, well, it did it fast because it didn't have to anything. But there were no changes. So save your work often. That's that's one Control of the keys. Control S is save. S. Control S as in save. Oh, well, Control S. And by the way, um, there is a f uh, there is a slide for that, yeah, and I usually know. hand it out, but in fact, it's on the slide. It so, is. Yeah, it's yeah. one of the slides. So please take advantage of it. Yeah. Okay. So I'm glad you asked the question because, uh, um, but here's so here's the other thing that uh, the dynamic, you really can't kill this thing. I mean, yeah, unless I threw it out a window or something. You're not you you can't kill this thing and you can't hurt anything. And, you know, you could, because I had users that would do this, they would accidentally erase a note they had been working on, a patient note, mm -hmm. and it would all have been gone away. Mm -hmm. I had a way that I could actually crawl in behind them literally, electronically, and I could often recover that, not always. So there often is ways to recover lost text, um, because the system does that. It saves your work so that um, on an intermittent basis, and, and you can set it, to, you can auto-save, and that's something that most I'm sure really all electronic record systems have a way where you can tell it to save it at a certain frame, um, mm -hmm. oh, like every minute or something. Mm -hmm. The only thing about that, though, to think about is it does cost you time. And remember we talked about latency and what we wanted zero. If the system is con every 30 seconds is saving a low note and it's a long one, then in fact that mm -hmm. will slow the user down a little bit. But maybe that user needs to have that protection. So, you know, you decide. Most of these, though, the user can set that themselves, most of them. So that's another thing, is auto-saving. Let me tell you, since we're on this topic, though, there's another thing here. One of the things that I'll tell you about in one of the very last slides today is how to speed up your computer. 
Well, one of the ways to speed up your computer is to get rid of all the TMP files. And what's a TMP file? A temporary. Right. When, when Microsoft Word, or really any of the Microsoft products, is working on a file, they create a backup, if you will, that's called TMP. So depending, you might be able to recover from your TMP file uh, the document too. So that's another way to do that. The thing is, it, auto, it sort of auto overwrites that at times. So uh, whether or not you'll actually get back what you lost is, is uncertain. But you, you can go find a local, a, a recent TMP file, and maybe you can recover it from there. So just be aware of that. Um, all right, so let's go back here. Okay. Uh, is this oh yeah, here it is. Okay. So one of the things here, here's a number of these um, these Windows commands. Yeah, there we go. And unfortunately, they don't all work the same, and they don't all work with Windows 8.1, by the way. So what you want to do if you have a Windows machine at home, you got to kind of figure out what version of, of the operating system you have, and then decide, and then play around a little bit and see what works. But one of the things that I like especially is the Window R command, because that's a key where you can do all kinds of things. Window R brings up the dialog where I can do things. So for instance, if I want to do a, a ping, uh, let's see if I can do that. If want to do that. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So what's a ping? A ping is that I'm sending a, com a command, a hello, basically, and it went away already. A hello out to, in this case, I just put in ping yahoo.com, and I always do this. So one of the things that's nice to know about that is if you ever have a user um, who says, "I can't, I can't get out to the internet." do a ping to Yahoo, or any reason it doesn't matter. Because what that will tell you, if it, if it comes back like it did, and it came back rather fast, but if it comes back, that means that your network is actually running. Because it's not, un not uncommon that what will happen in a hospital is you've got these closets with all this router stuff, you know, routing things, and they have un uninterrupted power supplies that drive them, but those batteries only last for a couple of years and they have to be replaced. So if the battery goes out on the UPS, it'll bring the router down, and then they won't be able to get out to the network. So the way to find out if, in fact, you do have network connectivity is just do a ping to Yahoo or whatever. Uh, and you'll notice I didn't put the www anymore. You don't really need to do that anymore. Just put the name. So yahoo.com, and if it comes back, then you know the network's at least working this minute, this second. You can't tell it's going to work five minutes, but it's working now. So that's a great little command to know. And to get there, I did the window R for window run. So that's a really nifty little command to remember. Um, let's see. I probably, let's see if it will let me run IP config. So window R. No, it probably, yeah, it won't, it won't let me do it. And the reason is IP config, go home and play that with your machine. And again, I don't, I apologize, I don't know what the analogous command for the Mac, but I'm sure there is one. I know I just the don't Apple know. geniuses, and I'm going to tell them to give me everything like what you've got yeah. there for the Apple. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Most of you, almost all clinical records run on a Windows environment. Uh, I'm not saying that none of them were in, in, win, uh, in a Mac, but really the 99.9% .9 of the time they're all Windows. I think the Mac has made incredible inroads over the most recent years. But whether that will continue, I don't know. But for, for our purposes, to learn about electronic health records, you really need to be a fairly decent Windows you know, savvy user. And they keep changing everything. Every new version is different. Like I said, that those commands don't all work exactly the same on the 8.1 machine. It's like, give me a break. And in fact, one of the reasons we have Windows 8.1 is because enough of us Windows guys screamed like crazy and said, Microsoft, come on, guys. Give us back our commands. And so they did, begrudgingly, and they didn't give them all, and they don't work exactly the same way they did in 7, but at least we have a lot of them back. But the, the window R command does work. And we'll see what happens when they have 10 coming back. And what IP config does, again, this is kind of a literacy thing, but IP config is this little nifty command that allows you to, uh, to decide what runs on startup. Because here's what uh, viruses do. 
one of the things that viruses do. They put a little command in your startup that says when, when you start up, send a command out to the main drone so that they know, the main drone knows that I'm active now so that they can use me as for denial of, uh, direct denial of service. And so you want to get that crap out of there. Now, actually, um, Norton will do it for you. So I'm lazy. Do let Norton do it for you. But that is, a, again, another issue. So if you go through, like, for instance, I just did this recently on my computer at home. I went through IPB config and anything that wasn't Microsoft, I disabled it. Because you just don't know. Uh, so I can tell, I, I'm very, <laughs> I don't know how to say it. I'm very interested, committed to this whole thing of security because I think healthcare, we, I think it's going to get so much worse in the not many distant, I mean, just last night I read a new thing about, you know, they discovered that Chinese hackers for 10 years have been ha hacking into a lot of U.S. computers using a very uh, specific set of commands that we didn't even know about until very recently. It's horrible. And the thing is now, uh, what I'm hearing at least is that the criminals are more interested in your health data than they are in your banking data because it's, it, in many cases it's more valuable. I mean, how, who of us has any money in our bank account, right? Yeah. So but you know, you can get your social security easier. Yeah. So that's right. I mean, they're they're always all in any good health record's probably going to have your social in there, your social security mm -hmm. number. So it's really scary. Okay. So those are the various Windows commands. Uh, I just encourage you to play with them. Um, and there's some more of them. But the, uh, the other thing I didn't mention, is, well, it'll show up later, and that is the, um, the Alt command, Alt tab command. Because what Alt tab does is this, watch. Alt tab allows me to move between open applications, including the desktop. Yeah. So you'll find that's very useful. Most people don't realize that. And actually, I will say, are those simultaneous you know, or are those? Are those no, that's a, that's a great question okay. because they're actually not. I just touch the Alt key okay. and then I just tap, tap, tap. Oh, okay. Okay. As many times as I want to. And the other thing, let me show you another trick. If I want to go back, I can just go backwards by using the back arrow. See what I'm doing? I'm just using arrows this time. Isn't that cool? But your hand isn't on a key. Well, my hand is on the Alt key. Oh, your hand is staying on the Alt key. It's staying on the Alt key. That's okay. a good question. Uh, That's so staying on the Alt key, but okay. then see, it allows me to... Okay? Okay. All right. Are you done with the, the, the meeting? I left. <laughs> I wanted to come and be part of your a live, live uh, presentation. They're coming, but they're oh, okay. saying... Okay. Did you guys have a good discussion today? Yeah. You're just asking questions about... Get rid of that beanie terrible. How they handle us crazy people. <laughs> Part-time, full-timers. Okay. <laughs> now, function commands. Most people aren't aware of all the function commands. And they're all up here. And it's like, why in the world do they have those commands up there? These commands at the top of the keyboard, okay? In Office, there's a lot of similarity, but there's still some differences. But one of the ones that I like the most is F12. I don't know about you, but I'm working away on a slideshow, obviously, a lot. And I've changed it, so I want to save it. So I can reach up and go find the Save As, but it's much faster and easier to say F12. Much faster. These slides are on your slides, too. Okay. So, you know, take advantage of that. That's, that's a great little command. You don't really need to run the F7 anymore because it's running all the time in the background. That's actually an old command. It should run all the time. And you'll notice that. I mean, even on email, if you put a, you know, you spell Sunday wrong or whatever, it'll, it'll stop you. In fact, the way I have, you can actually set up your computer um, so that, uh, suppose you have a habit, for whatever reason, of spelling Sunday, S-N-U-D-A-Y. As soon as you do that, it, you can set it up so that it will fix that. It doesn't even make you fix it. It does it for you. Uh, and that's in your setup stuff to do with Word. If you do it for one, it works for all of them, by the way. But I use that a lot. I mean, that is so helpful. To can fix. you turn that off, though? Because like when I was typing yes. it safer, it that kept putting... EHR. EHR. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And in fact, what yeah. I, would, I did, you can go in there and turn off Word, because it normally it's actually, that's a default. Just okay. You can just erase that. 
and then it doesn't do it to you. Where, where it comes up and there's a little X, just click on the X? Is that what you mean? Like no, you go into the setup command for, oh, setup. Okay. Uh, for uh, Word or, or um, PowerPoint, okay. and it, it'll get you to the spell checker thing, okay. and you can actually turn that off so that it's no longer a default. Okay. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. So, to some degree, each application. Now, here's the other thing that a lot of people aren't aware of, and that is the F5 command. Especially if you're on the web, you'll find that's very useful. Suppose, for instance, you get to a website, and for some reason you clicked on something and it broke or whatever, and you have half of a web page. If you hit F5 to, re uh, to refresh, it'll do that for you, and I find, especially on the web, that's a very useful. And all the web browsers that I use commonly, uh, I use uh, Firefox, Chrome, and I don't. Even, my wife uses IE, but I don't use it much. But anyway, the F5 works for all of those, so that can be a very useful command. Okay. And you can have the same thing for PowerPoint there. Yes. So There's the slide back at the beginning. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> well, okay. Thank you. So uh, let me let me explain that. So F5. Once you're in PowerPoint, what it actually does is bring up the. the the slideshow. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. You've got 12 slides that you're working on, and you're at slide 7. Mm -hmm. And I want to start the show at slide 7 using mm -hmm. Shift F5. Oh, okay. Shift F5 will start the slideshow right where you were. Oh, okay. I, I mean, I, I know I irritate the hell out of people. I was at a meeting, a faculty meeting a few months back, and somebody was trying to get to there, and I kept saying, F5, just get <laughs> F5, you'll get there, because they were trying to find, you know, the little... No, I knew that half my students. <laughs> Get back to where I want to go. Yeah. Yeah. But Shift F5 is just really helpful. Okay. But that's unique, obviously, to PowerPoint, so... Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a, there's a lot on MS Word, and by the way, speaking of this one, uh, I'm not going to do Excel today. We're going to do it, but I'm going to do it at another point. Yeah. But lynda.com has free Excel classes. They're free to everybody. L-Y-N-D-A.com. And I think what you have to do is you go to SU. Unfortunately, I apologize. I don't remember where in F SU. But if you go to SU, there's a jump off point where it takes you to Lynda. And then you can access any of that. And there's a whole gob of Excel. There's Word. There's. from the library. If you go to the Lemieux library page, I think oh, really? I've seen it there. Yeah. You may be right. I should know. I've always Maybe wondered what it was. Yeah, yeah. Linda. dot com is a yeah, whole. Yeah, don't you go to web pages? There's a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, there's a gob of stuff. Now here's the thing. The problem is the university pays pretty serious money for that. They won't keep doing it unless we use it. So please take advantage of it. So what I thought I'd do is kind of alert people about Linda. dot com. Go go spend some time with Excel there, and then when we get to the class, it'll be easier okay. for you. Okay. So. When are you going to cover the Excel? I don't know. Okay. Sometimes. Life is, be prepared. Life seems so uncertain these days. <laughs> you know, I hate to forget. I know. It, that's the thing. I think the schedule that you have is, Tell me, Tell me. is pretty bright on, but. Okay. Um, okay, so let me also show you something. So if I, um, I'm going to go back over to the editor here. Yeah. If I click inside here, and I see the dotted line, that tells me that in fact it thinks I'm going to be editing text within that box mm -hmm. that's there. If I want to move that box, I do two things. I just hit the escape key, and you'll notice what happens is that line becomes a full line. It isn't dotted anymore. Mm -hmm. Then, if I want, I can just move things. Oh, yeah. cool. Now, let me show you something else though that's even more helpful. Suppose I'm working with a couple of images. I don't really have images right now. But, uh, so I just want to scooch it a tiny bit. In that case, I hit Control. And look, it just scooches it a little tiny bit. And I find that when I'm working with images and stuff, okay. that's very useful to remember is the Control arrow. Okay. That scooches it just a tiny bit. I think there's like um, either three or five scooches to the other, you know, to that. If I so if I'm doing that, so if I do control, yeah, I think it's about three to one is what it is. 
So you see that, so that arrow. But the point is that I, what I often do, so here, I'm gonna go down here to my name, click inside, I don't wanna edit my name, I just wanna move it, I just hit escape once, now it's a full line, and now I can just move it down, move it up, whatever. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And again, these are trivial, but boy, do they save you time. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think they work pretty similarly on the Mac for these. So. Yeah, for these. Mm -hmm. So I hope so, yeah. So it's the escape key? Is that yeah. what it was? Okay. Well, escape, what escape does, it, good point. So what the escape does, it takes you out of the editor inside and moves you, and then you're seeing that, that box as a sole object together. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't know how to explain that in. You no. Know. no. Is that just for PowerPoint, or can you do that for other things as well? You Actually, if you're right, in Word, it, uh, if you're working, like, for instance, if you're working in Word and you have um, images that you've put in there or text boxes, it does the same thing. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. You can. Although, here's, I cheat. So what I will often do is I'll get things really pretty in, in PowerPoint because I'm so familiar with it, and then I port it over. I just copy it over to Word. And that way you haven't had to do it all in Word. Because Word is really funny about your margins. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, whereas it seems to me that PowerPoint's a lot more forgiving. Mm -hmm. It um, is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I tend to work in PowerPoint. Then when I get what I want, then I'll just copy it over to Word. Because mm -hmm. uh, Word is... Words are pain in the butt sometimes. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing the other day, but it just it would drive me nuts. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here are these DOS commands. Now, what does DOS mean? What does DOS mean? Digital operating system. No. That's a good guess. There was a good guess. That's true. <laughs> it's disk operating system. Oh, this is so is, close. It, it came on these. Yes. Uh, did you get it? Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to find out where the slides were in your, in your oh, module. Oh, sorry. Yeah, there. It's not quite listed, so. Perfect. No, it's there. It's, no, it's there. Okay. So it was disk operating system, because the original PCs, actually your operating system was put into a, the, uh, uh, actually it was much smaller when they were about, uh, not three and a half, but were they about five and a quarter? That's what they were. I don't know how big this guy is, but they were five and a quarter. Um, and so that's what DOS stands for. Now. Is DOS the same as Windows? I remember asking my one of my profs this one time, and he said, well, that's a good question. When Windows came out first, you still had to install DOS, and then you installed Windows on top of it. Now there is no such thing as DOS, really. It's all Windows. Um, and so those are some of your commands that are common. You'll notice that um, Control plus in. Control, remember I mentioned select all? Control A for select all. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to copy stuff. So all of those commands are you'll find are helpful. And here you'll notice that um, if I want to, uh, oh, this is the my file menu and all of those choices. I'm not sure that's right. Um, let me go back to the desktop here. If I do window A. Oh yeah. So window F, and, and, and this actually works in Windows 8, is a, it's a find command, F-I-N-D, find, to help you find stuff, Windows 8 F. Um, let me go back over here. Yeah, I have to kind of keep jumping around because things have changed so much and they're going to continue to change. Anyway, you'll find these are really helpful. Another key that I, you've seen me use already today is the escape key. It's amazing people don't realize how helpful that key can be. So I, I just comment that to you, that the escape key, um, and especially in a clinical environment, I often would find that somebody would start writing a, an order in, in an electronic record, and they'd say, oh no, I, I'm not, I don't want to do that, and I want to get out quickly. Instead of having to use their mouse and go over and click escape or quit or whatever, if you just hit escape, whenever you have a dialogue, if it's an empty dialogue, and you haven't put a lot of information, you just hit escape. Another way to do that then in that case is do whenever you have an open window and you want to get, and you do have stuff in there, you have, you've typed some stuff in there, if you hit control F4, it will close that particular window, that one window. And let me, um, let me make a point here too that we'll, we'll see, let's go here. Oops. So, what is focus? And what and is there anything in focus here? You see anything in focus? 
Focus means what window is active right now in my oh, computer? Okay. That's what that means. Well, there it is. You can mm -hmm. see that that has focus. And the point is that if I wanted to, and I, I've already got it open, so I don't want to open it again, but if I just press enter, now, no, I don't want to open that. I want to open Google Chrome right below it. If I just arrow down, I'm just changing focus, and hit enter, it'll open up a Chrome window, another Chrome window. If I want to close that window, and I don't care, I can just Alt F4, and it'll close that window for me. You see how fast that is and so much time that can save you? And the reason I spend time is because I think you'll find you'll be able to integrate this knowledge with your electronic health record uh, savvy, and as you get, you know, depending on where you go and what you do and what system you have. It's, it's so how do you get out of the toolbar when I use keystrokes? I mean, I, I actually, you know, on my home computer, I'll just delete those extra little, you know, uh, uh, files like Google Chrome on the desktop because well, I've got it down on the taskbar. And so do I. You know, okay, and, so... And, and there's, a reason, there's a good reason for that. Okay. And here's the other reason. What you don't realize is, speaking of RAM, and Speaking of things that take up RAM, that actually takes up a fair amount of RAM. Mm -hmm. I mean, spank my hand because at home I've got a gazillion icons on my desktop, and I shouldn't because they really it does slow your machine down. Okay. And so just be aware of that. If you have a user that's got a lot of crap on their um, their desktop, it, it might slow their machine down, especially mm -hmm. in a network environment. So I could just go to Alt Tab, and I would still be able to get to Chrome them mm -hmm. that way. Alt Tab. Mm -hmm. I'd be able to get to Chrome. Yep. I mean, you're using that key, the keystroke down arrow to get to well, Chrome. And here's another little gotcha that's crazy. Mm -hmm. These are all a single click. Right. These are a double click. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. And you have to teach your users that. It's like, why, why did they do that? And I actually I had a meeting with a Microsoft engineer, and I told her that. I said, you know, why do you guys do that? It's really confusing. Well, and just the way we know it. Well, it's not a good way. The users get confused. I don't know, you know, once you start working with users, training them, um, and in a way too, because we're, we're so into touch now, and the, where they have to use a, a keystrokes and clicks, single click, double click. I remember when we first got mice, and you know, we were trying to teach people right click, left click, single click, double click. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. it's it's just madness, and it's it's very very confusing. And now with Mac, I mean, it gets worse. I was saying before you got here that um, you know that most of your electronic chart systems are in are run on a Windows environment, mm -hmm. and so that's why these these can be helpful to you. All right, so you are going to go back. See how easy that was to get back yeah. to where it needed to be. Okay, so these commands are, are helpful. I uh, normally print this out, but this time I didn't as a hey, It's all online here. Take mm -hmm. advantage, enjoy. Yeah. Okay, so now let's jump over to database. If I didn't say it before, really, electronic health record system is only just a big fat database. Okay, now what's different about it is there's a few things that are different. Um, you can build into a database it, native intelligence, and you know you can get it to do certain things so that it helps people who have to use that database. That's so very true in an electronic health record world. Most electronic health records are built upon a relational database. We'll talk in a few seconds about what that all means, just in case you, you don't know, because I wouldn't have, I didn't understand, you know, before I started reading this stuff. All right. So a relational database simply what simply does. It puts like information in individual tables, and then they are related to other tables for that same patient, for that same situation, for that same entity. Because that's an entity is something that we talk about a lot in relational databases. Okay? So here is an entity right here. But this entity has characteristics. She has a hair color, she has eye color, she has height, she has weight. She has age. All of those things are just attributes of this entity. And relational databases are exactly the same thing. You have patients and their entities. And they have blood sugar readings. And, and they have blood pressures. And all the things that we know that our patients have. And so that all fits. And so the data then is stored in relational tables. Now, now I'm going to throw a curve at you. A big curve, actually, too. So, um, so I already said this to you, that related sets of data are in one table. Tables are related by keys. And what a key is, is to give a unique 
number or attribute that identifies that entity. So, so you will have one key. Actually, you won't have one key, but you'll have one main key that makes you unique. And so that could be your Yuli. When I did my practicum in uh, Alberta, they were working on the concept of Yuli's uniform lifetime identifier. So everybody had a key. It basically was a key. And so in the system, you would always be identified by that key. And all of your attributes, no matter what they were, they were linked back, if you will, to that key field. OK. Um, this is a great, I think I mentioned this, but this is a great website. Computer, How Stuff Works, or just How Stuff Works. <laughs> really, really helpful. Anything, you know, packets, relational database, you can look all this stuff up. And it's, so, it's really well done. Actually, by the way, Wikipedia is a good source, too. But How Stuff Works is a great website for that. So whenever you have a question or you have a child who has a question, whatever, go to How Stuff Works. It's, uh, you'll find it very, very helpful. OK, now, however, yeah, we're talking here about relational databases. The fact is that the largest major uh, systems in, in use in this country, at least, are hierarchical databases and not relational. And the reason is that hierarchical databases seem to have the most helpful functionality when it comes to patient data, when it comes to electronic health record systems. And so Epic, the woman who started, who's by the way a billionaire, mm -hmm. multiple yeah. billionaire, smart lady, used to work at the VA. Mm -hmm. She took the VA system, which it is, it's <laughs> fine, it's free. I mean, it's, it's open source. So she took that system and she built Epic. Mm -hmm. So their front end is different than the VA's front end, but their back end is still, it's Vista. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Veterans Information System Technology Architecture. It's just another version of Vista, Vista which, and it's a hierarchical database. So what in the world is a hierarchical database? Think of it this way. Okay, so here we have an entity again, but we have this entity has gender, and her particular gender is female. And you see right away how things can have a hierarchy. Mm -hmm. So uh, that data in a, in a medical database, in some ways it's easier to work from hierarchies. And because here's the thing, show me all of the females who are over 50 years old. Right, That's very hierarchical if you think about it in my searching. I want to know all of my patients who are 50 years old and who are female, whatever. Or maybe who have a certain uh, LDL level or, you know, on it, on it goes, a certain blood pressure, a certain uh, glucose level, whatever. So you can see right away why the hierarchical databases can be of value. And in fact, the two largest databases in the world, really, that are in common use are run off of a hierarchical database. You know, what are we doing here? Oops. So data is organized in a tree-like structure. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a good description of it under MOMS. And MOMS is a, a multiple user medical programming system. I believe that's the right, mm -hmm. what that MOMS stands for. The multiple user MOMS. I mean, I, one of my profs was the guy who invented months. It was an amazing book. I'm sure he's gone to heaven now, but um, it's great. I mentioned to you this already. It's used by Epic and, and the VA. OK. Um, but just so you're aware of that, that there are two major types of databases. Who knows? I think in the not distant future, we may have a completely new um, hierarchy, or not hierarchy, but um, sort of system, if you will, for that. I, I wouldn't be at all surprised. But uh, Vista and Epic have done very well together for all these many years. And you know they have like, I don't know, 50% of the marketplace, VHR does. And the VA, of course, has the largest electronic health record system in the world and the largest number of users in the world. Nobody's got it. I don't think even China has it. Although they probably stole it from us. Maybe they're using <laughs> Vista for all I know. That was what I just found out. I was reading this last night that uh, for 10 years, they've been hacking into our systems. And so they've, what they realize now is they've stolen lots and lots of secrets. If you ever see a picture of the Chinese sort of super jet, the fighter jet that they have, it looks exactly like one of ours. I mean, exactly. Their, their uh, space module, that uh, just like our Challenger spaceship, you know, looks exactly just smaller. Mm -hmm. They stole the designs for Boeing. Mm -hmm. Duh. I have a question about the, what you're just talking about in terms yeah. of the Vista. 
So I know I was reading in uh, our books about the legislation that's going to require interoperability mm -hmm. and health information exchanges. So is there going to be a penalty? And who I'm thinking about specifically is the VA and DOD, who still haven't found a way to come together. So is there going to be a, a federal penalty in the future where if those guys don't get it together? Mm -hmm. Well, that's actually, I'm involved in that right now. Um, we're working on it. <laughs> How's that? Call us in the morning. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, um, I don't know. I, I just don't know what they're going to do. In fact, I, I'm kind of discouraged. It just seems like... Because um, DOD will not go to VISTA, even though it's a pretty good system. Yeah. Well, and... and um, Obama hasn't had the courage to stand up and say, hey, we need to do this, let's let's have you guys move over. Because their provider group, and I've heard this multiple times, hate Alta, which is their system. Um, I wish I had a good answer. I don't have any answer for you. It's crazy. Yes, we're working on it, but uh, when and how we're going to get this fixed, I don't know. And I, and I also think that is a giant problem amongst all systems. It is. It's, yeah. You can't, you know, you work in uh, multi-care, you've got Epic, you work somewhere else, you've got a different system, and, you know, they don't talk to each other. So one of your classmates, I guess a predecessor to you, a doctoral student, she, her clinic where she's a nurse practitioner, they moved to a newer version. Well, they, they were bought by another older hospital, so they then had to migrate to all their systems, and mm -hmm. so in the process, they got a newer version of Epic. Mm -hmm. And so version four of Epic would not talk to version three of Epic. Oh, that's incredible. It's like, excuse me? <laughs> yeah. I can't it, believe that's even within remotely. that system. Yeah. How amazing. crazy is that? Yeah, backward towards and, and what happens is a couple of things. The vendors say, oh yeah, we can do that, but it'll take two years and an extra $50 million to make it happen. I'm, I'm not exaggerating. That's, that's what they'll tell you. Yeah. It's horrible. So they even have compatibility within their system, much less working between, you know, people I mean, that has to flip between two different systems because their insurance different changes. Oh, yeah. So. I mean, here the High Tech Act was all about, oh, yes, I live in Seattle, but I went to D.C. for a meeting and, and stepped off the curb and broke my ankle, but they couldn't get the information. Right. I should have been able to, but they didn't find out I was allergic to whatever and right. okay. gave it to me, and then I died. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's like, are we going to get this figured out? Yeah. Well, I guess we're just at the beginning phases of all of this, so. No, we're not. Well, okay. That's not true. <laughs> We've been doing this for 40 years. I was on the first in 1970. Well, it's small clinics, though, I've been just starting into. Yeah, it's that's still, true. And, and I've just worked in small clinics. So, so but here's the thing. Well, I think to, to answer your question more thoroughly, though, uh, the, the uh, meaningful use criteria, which mm -hmm. we're going to, determine who gets reimbursed for the cost of, uh, of putting in a system, you know, it is helping. But the problem is it still really can't get over some of those bumps to do with interoperability. It just can't. Yeah. And so, you know, are you going to find these clinics or are you going to find the vendors who won't sit down and talk to one another because of all their proprietary interests? Exactly. And I don't want to tell you my secrets because then I'll lose money and, oh, my gosh. <laughs> and, 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 and again, like, who's, we're talking... But the money the government has spent, my boss, who was no longer my boss, but I mean, he was, I mean, he spent the last five years of his life flying back and forth to D.C. to try to get them to work through that. And he's finally said, I, I guess, I haven't talked to Paul, but he just said, screw it, I'm going to retire. I mean, you know, and that's frankly what I feel like doing again, is retiring. <laughs> it's just, dang. Even in the UW system, because I work at Harvard Oh, Bureau. yeah. They are ER wouldn't switch over from the Orca system, and so all of the so Harborview uses Epic, but our ER does not. It uses Orca, so and the two systems don't communicate. So then they had to add something called Mindscape so that we could at least peek in to see people's <laughs> records. But they're two totally different systems. And, and so, Mindscape is read only. And Mindscape is read only. So um, and it, so I I. So I work in women's clinic in Harborview, but I also work for HICSATS, which is through the emergency department at Harborview. So I have to use two, I have to be trained on and use two totally oh, yeah. different systems that don't even, can't even talk to each other. Yeah. It's really so sad. It's, it's, it's yeah. kind of, I mean, pathetic is the word, right? That people couldn't, and the, the issue was that people who were trained on ORCA, um, they just, 
they were like, we're not gonna learn your system. That's, that, they were like, we're not doing that. We're in Oracle, we're gonna stay with Oracle. If you wanna get Epic and you wanna learn Epic, go for it. So what kind of rights do they providers much. and, you know, in personnel like that, to what parameter or degree can well, they do what, that? what needs to happen is enough of the provider groups, I mean, nurses and docs have to say, I'm not gonna work here anymore until you guys start playing together. But just it, it, just say just say we wanted to get those two systems to talk to each other, it would take yeah. many months of hard work to make that happen, and, and a lot of dollars. And a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, I hate to discourage you, but no, it's discouraging. There are a lot of things that are discouraging. You just go with it. You just go with it. <laughs> but it's but it's silly. I mean, it's just downright silly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my old boss, my previous boss, when I was. Uh, he actually is over at UW now, and and Tom has fought this for years, and he still and he said it's all about my kingdom. Don't you tell me how to do my kingdom stuff. I'm I'm in charge of my kingdom, and you can do your kingdom, but I don't really care at all about yeah. your kingdom. I just care about mine, and screw you, go away. My kingdom better than your kingdom. Well, no, you know what it is. It's not so much that my kingdom is better. It's what I know. Oh, okay. Uh, there's, there's a couple of principles I think I may have mentioned in an earlier class, and that is um, I'm going to deploy what I know. I'm going to deploy what I know how to support. I told you the story about the printer. I, I found him a little $40 printer that would have solved the whole barcode thing with wristbands. <laughs> and there were 40, but they, instead, we bought $1,200 printers. Whatever, what, how many times does 40 go into 100 or 1,200? I don't yeah. know. But, shit, I mean, I just. <laughs> Freaking believe it. Yeah. So that's 300 times. It was 300 times more expensive. But they knew how to support the 1200 ones because that's that's what they had for a number of years. And uh, I guess the vendor did a good job of selling them. Yeah, and we could have easily used the little ones. And if we if one broke, mm -hmm. just plug in a new one for 40 bucks. Come on. Mm -hmm. No, couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like. Just... And, and the other thing was shut up and do your job and don't argue. Don't. <laughs> Don't tell me about what works better or whatever. I don't want to know that. Yeah. I just want to do what I know do I want to do. I'm going to run my kingdom. Don't tell me. <laughs> okay. It's unfortunate. Sorry. It's uh, there are quite a few king commands. I, I won't say so much in, in um, PowerPoint, although, well, yes, there are in PowerPoint. But in Word, there's a lot of commands. For instance, if you go, let's just go back up here. Let me go back. Oh, crap. There it is. Okay. So there's a lot of commands in here that allow you, especially in a Word document, to do some really nifty editing of your document. So for instance, if I'm at the top, and I use this a lot, I just find it so, and I want to go to the bottom of my document, I just hit Control End. Begin to learn these two little keys up here, the Home key and the End key. Now you've got them on the Mac, mm -hmm. okay? And by doing Control Home, I can go to the top of my document. If I do control end, I go to the end of my document. Now, however, suppose I want to highlight a paragraph that I want to get rid of or copy. If I do control shift and then use the arrow key up or down, depending on where I am in that paragraph, I can highlight just that paragraph. And again, like I showed you, if you could just hit the escape key, that paragraph will go away if you want it to go away. Or if I then uh, do control, um, once it's highlighted, do control C for copy and then control V for paste. Why don't we use control P for paste? How come? It's print. Okay. Right, exactly. Good for you. So in the very, very beginning, and by the way, Bill, these are Bill's commands, you know. He's the guy that you can blame. Oh, yeah. He just lives up the road here. Because <laughs> they've interviewed him about this. And I think, oh, I know what. They asked Bill, why did you guys do that stupid thing? Do you remember that you used to have to hit Control to Alt Delete to log? Well, you still do on the Windows yeah, 7 yeah. machine. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You had to hit Control Alt Delete. And they asked him, he said, oh, well, we just, I don't know, we just did it that way. <laughs> no know. particular reason. And yeah. people are saying, you know, that's very confusing. Um, but I know on the old w Windows NT machine, you had to do Control Alt Delete right. to get to that dialog, the, the log on dialog. Okay, but anyway, play around with that control, with the arrows, with home and end. So again, if I'm at the be, uh, end, I'm at the beginning of the document, I want to go to the end, I just hit control end. Now, if I'm at the beginning of the document, and I want to highlight the whole document, I hit control shift end, and it will highlight that whole document. Although, 
If I'm at the beginning of the document, what's an easier command? Control A for select all. Mm. So that's another way to do it. But be careful because if you um, hit enter. if you hit well if you hit enter or space, <laughs> you will lose all of that text. Yeah. But again, what are you going to do? You're just going to simply get out of the document. Hit, uh, hit yeah, no. Yeah. Control F4 to get out and hit in for no. I don't want to save it and then come right back in. You're off the race. Can't you just use the little arrow key up in the left hand corner? Yeah, there you can. Out. Yeah, and that's another point. Um, it used to be, well, that's a, the other thing is this. I still use this command a lot, Control Z. Uh -huh. What does Control Z do? If you're doing something in Windows and I hit Control Z, it helps you undo what you done did. Uh -huh. But here's the bad news. It will only give you one level of undo. Whereas if you use uh -huh. the arrows at the top, You'll get it all. you can have, I mean, however many. And you know where that came from, by the way, was... Um, with uh, Adobe Photoshop. Uh -huh. Because when you're working on an image and, oh, I made that shading a little different, I want to go back about three keystrokes, you can just keep doing that and it'll take you right back to where you were. It remembers all of those strokes. That takes up RAM because, of course, that has to be remembered. Right. But the beauty is now it does that and it has multiple layers of undo, which I, I, I find that. Uh, and, you know, I think that Control Z does work. I think it will do multiple layers of undo in Word. Because I, I was just doing that the other day, um, where I was working on something and I had to go back, and so, yeah, I'm pretty sure it does. But anyway, Control Z is just, you can tell you, it's just a quick way to undo what you done did. Especially if it's someone, oh, I put the wrong address, I just go un undo. What about like saving pictures and things like that? I still haven't figured that out. I mean, I have multiple steps yet, you know, like copy and paste the picture, you want to add it to a PowerPoint or whatever. Yeah. Is there anything, quick fixes for that? Well, one of the things I, I just want to make you aware of, and we were going to talk about this, so let's go back over wanna, here. If you're talk about it. Let's just go back over here, and suppose I want to put an image in here. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I'm going to do an Alt-Tab and go over to Chrome. Then I'm going to do a new tab, and I think there's, I think Control-M will actually let me do a new tab. Yeah, well, it doesn't, yeah, new tab, okay. Mm -hmm. So then I'm going to go here, Right here, and I'm going to click on images. So, okay, give it a name. And then I'm going to look for syringes. Maybe I want to put a syringe on there. Oops. Spell. And then hit enter. Okay. So then I, now, what you can do is you simply, oh, so I'm going to pick this image, and I want to show you a little trick too, by the way. So I'm going to, Right click on this, and I'm going to do that right there. Copy image. Okay? Copy image. Now, uh, I'm going to left click on that. I'm going to go back over here, and I'm going to right click and say paste. But here's the paste. It's important that you select this guy right here. Mm -hmm. okay. So there's the pictures up there on the. Or I, it's in RAM. It's in a buffer. It's in a buffer. Oh, you didn't talk about that. A buffer is a place in RAM, it's a space in memory, that's volatile by the way, and we'll talk about what that means in a sec, uh, that's been reserved for stuff, for any of my stuff. I can put anything I want there. I can put an image there, I can put text, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so it's in a buffer. It's been saved to a, a space in RAM. Okay. And then I'm going to pick this guy here. And there it is. There. Okay. Now, I don't like that white background. What the heck am I going to do about that? Well, there's a wonderful little command that I'll show you. If I go to, well, I'm so smart I can't show you. <laughs> oh, quick style. Let's see here. No, no it's in text. There. And what I do, by the way, when I do this, is that I actually put it up on the bar right at the top. I always add that to the bar, but I've, I've only used this computer a couple times, so it doesn't have it. Because what you can do then, and I, I don't want to take your time, is if you put then, once you, you select that, because you've got this highlight, this is where your focus is, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it focuses on this yeah. image, mm -hmm. and you just put it anywhere in this white, it'll make that white go away, it makes it transparent. Yes. That white will all go away. Oh, okay. So if you notice on my slides, you'll see them in a few seconds. Oh, um, oh, yeah. That I don't have all those white backgrounds because that's what normally comes with it. I'll show you what it does. So it does pixelate it a little bit. I'll show you what that means later. But anyway, so there. 
Maybe over the break I'll play around and find it. Yeah. Oh, by the way, now I'm not, this is not meant to offend. I just want to make somebody aware of this. If you want to see if there's any naked pictures of yourself, <laughs> I'm just letting you know this. Oh my gosh. Yep. Scary. So you go to Google and you click on images. I'm going to put in Michael Beebe. <laughs> Uh -oh. be scared. I'm not going to look. Naked. Yeah. I'm not like, oh. You just have Michael Beebe naked, right? Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out the governor of um, Arkansas, and I'm related to him, is, okay. is, uh, is, uh, his name is Beebe. It's, uh, it's Michael Beebe, by the way. They, for some reason, they call him Mike. I go by Michael, but anyway. Oh. So there's no naked here, so. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, it's kind of like I've never got that professor, so, you know. But I just, so, if, you know, the stars, if you want to see the picture of Jennifer Lawrence, you know, she was fussing, oh. it's, it's just put in Jennifer Lawrence naked and... Oh, so, that's so sad. Really you can't really, and please, I, I don't, don't report me for, you know, whatever. I just, I just want to make you aware that it's possible to find that. be careful that. with what you're typing in. Yeah, yeah just be careful, that's right. So... Naked well, can I tell a story about that too? Because yeah. one time I was doing research and I typed in whitehouse.com. Mm -hmm. Oh! A, it's a porn it's, site. It's a porn site. Yeah. It's a, it's oh! A, it, 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 it was a I know. Oh, let, oh, let me tell you, because yeah. I taught a physical assessment class. And oh my so, gosh. Yeah. It's whitehouse.org. No, oh, that It's a good. correct website. No, yes. it's whitehouse.gov. Oh, no. I thought it was whitehouse.org. No, okay. it's gov. Yeah. Dot gov. Right. Well, it's yeah. not whitehouse.com. I don't know that. <laughs> yeah, whitehouse.com is actually uh, a whorehouse. I mean, it's, you know, that's oh, part of where it came from. Oh and of course, they've tried to negotiate with these people that own it. So when you realize, if you, when you, you first get, if you will, a brand new URL, Uniform mm -hmm. Resource Locator, and, and that's as old, this is ancient history now, but, um, you know, it costs you like, I don't know, $9 or something, or nothing, I forget, it's, it's not very expensive. Uh, in any case, then, what happens then is you can learn or later turn around and sell that to people. So now that you have whitehouse.gov, they go to this guy who happens to own, if you will, whitehouse.com, say, we want to buy that URL. That, that, that's actually the proper term is domain name, domain name. Um, so how much will you charge us? And you can charge the limit, whatever you want to charge. And they'll, so you're probably asking for multi-millions of dollars. Multi-millions because it gets a lot of traffic because all these people think I'm going to go get the White House and they go dot com and it doesn't get you there so yeah interesting yeah. well it's like those two um, when when every I don't know has Jeb Bush announced his run for presidency yeah. I don't know but when he was, has he already when the when it, when people were starting to talk a little bit about it I don't know if you guys remember there's a news article going around about the two homosexual men down in Oregon who back in 2007 bought the domain name jebbushforpresident.com oh. and, um, and they will not sell it they will not oh give it they will not give it up and so if you go there then it's their own personal blog about you know homosexual rights and justice and that kind of thing but it's jebbushforpresident.com and they bought it back in 07 they thought they thought for sure the guy would run eventually um. and they won't they won't give it up wow. I love it <laughs> <laughs> Poor Jeff. Gonna have to get gonna have to get a little more creative. Well, the other Floridian is Marco Rubio. who just announced this morning yeah, he he's gonna run. Yeah. So yeah, it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be very interesting. Um, Poor old Hilly. They're gonna beat the crap out of her before this is all said and done. I think that's you. You have to. I mean, I can't even describe with the how thick your skin has to be to run for office. Oh my like God! Twice. Yeah. Nuts. So. And after being Secretary of State. <laughs> I'm for oh, <laughs> and she looked battle worn after that. I was <laughs>